In this video I'm looking at power supply noise. First from this low noise supply, QL355, how it affects the Simon noise of this low noise oscillator, which is low noise only when the power supply is extremely noise free. Here is the phase noise I see when feeding the unit directly from that supply. And the noise level is much higher than it is when there is a good RC filter between the supply and the unit. The phase noise spectrum looks really odd around 40 Hz here. I don't think this is really the noise from the oscillator. So I assume the noise of the unit goes something like here. The power supply noise does not affect the amplitude noise, which you can see here, uh, or rather you cannot see it because it's below uh, the sensitivity of the system. The red dots are all the way around the same level where the amplitude noise comes. And statistics is not good enough to see where it really is. Now I have switched to another power supply. This one is not specified as low noise, so it is standard noise from this supplier. What I see here is that there is much more noise at the side here. It's red, it was green before. But there are fewer spurs close to the carrier, means fewer low frequency spurs from the supply. And I will wait for a while to get the spectrum. The phase noise is much higher above about 10 Hz. Here it's about flat like this and one can understand this cannot be a property of the power supply, this must be something in my uh, Leanrod system. So I can look at the amplitude noise instead. Now the amplitude noise has a peak here. This is an artifact because varying voltage changes the frequency but not the amplitude. So this must be the phase modulation that comes in the amplitude. Uh, because the phase angle at very low frequencies is not correct. Uh, there is a high pass filter in the sound card. It suppresses DC completely, but it gives a phase shift over a range of maybe 10 Hertz. And this becomes very clear when I go for the, ex the next mode, which is to show the correlation between the modulation types as well as phase noise as and AM noise. And here it is very obvious. Uh, the sum of these traces, white and yellow, would be something like that. And the correlation between AM and phase modulation is shown here with the real part and the imaginary part, uh, which is the phase angle between the two modulation kinds. So uh, I can see now that from about 20 Hertz up to about 50 Hertz, I cannot trust the result for phase noise because it comes partly in the AM uh, form. And I can also see here at about 80 Hz I have a region which is unreliable. And I can see also that there is a small correlation between AM noise and phase noise, which means that variations in the voltage does change the amplitude a little. Close to the carrier, this is 0.2 Hz, the amplitude noise is very small 
and the phase noise is about the same as with the other power supply and correlation between phase noise and AM noise is very small and that's because the AM noise is very small and at some higher this is one and a half hertz here it starts to be a little bit correlated here are the specifications for the QL355 uh, ripple and noise typically below 30, 0.35 millivolts in constant voltage mode the EX355P is the same as the 355R when it comes to the noise specification there is nothing about noise here so ripple and noise it says typically below 2 millivolts RMS here is what I have observed now uh, the low noise supply is the blue points the line like that and the green is the standard supply and at very low frequency offsets that means at very low frequencies both are very similar but they do differ a lot at 100 Hertz that's here and this artifact of my test system is the same in both cases so I guess the curve goes like that the red points is what I measured uh, with the oscillator using the EX355 and a low pass filter like this about 10 ohms and about 0.45 farads it means that the suppression at 0.2 Hertz here should be high enough to not give this kind of contribution uh, significantly less maybe 17 dB or something of that magnitude I think uh, so uh, the deviation I have seen here it could be noise from the capacitors from the leakage current or it could be something else uh, it could be the oscillator itself that behaves like this because of some property who's the crystal for the crystals uh, so that is what I'm going to try to look at later on in this video what's the reason for this and can I do something to make the oscillator less sensitive to voltage variations here is the baseband graph of Linrod uh, it has been running for two hours with very high resolution uh, it is 0.1 Hertz from here to here it's running from this power supply and I now change the voltage 0.2 volts and then I wait to see how much the frequency changed here we can see that 0.2 volts gives a frequency step of about 1.4 millimeters on the screen 0.1 Hertz that is 9 millimeters this is what I have 0.2 volts gives 0.0155 Hertz and that gives me that 1 volts gives 5 times more that's 0.078 and that's the derivative of frequency versus voltage 0.078 Hertz per volts someone more clever than me could use that to compute the noise power density on the output of the power supply using the noise levels I have seen as sideband noise here the frequency is determined by the phase angle at the maximum and it's here and I save this in the memory and then I change here by one volt like that and I can see clearly there is a difference 
not much, but it is there. And I should be able to look at data divided by memory. And it says 1.36 degrees. And I can move the marker around to see how stable it is. So 1.4 memory, 1.4 degrees roughly. And I could check the scale, auto scale, like that. So it says 1.4 degrees on the average. Phase noise is closely related to frequency stability. Here you can see the center frequency of the oscillator as measured on my system. And we can see that there is frequency modulation with about one hour. And that is in the order of millihertz. So as a sideband noise, this would show up as something at millihertz. That's not something I can measure. And what you see here is the combined instability of my reference oscillator and the oscillator under test. I want to measure the power supply noise at very low frequencies, below 1 Hz. To do that I have designed this box uh, because I cannot use the oscilloscope directly on 16 volts to measure microvolts. So what I'm doing is to convert the noise to a higher frequency, uh, 10 megahertz. So the new device under test is the power supply, nominally 16 volts DC. And then I connect it uh, with this ground point, which is the box outer wall. And then I have a transformer. Uh, through which I route the signal. There is a 3 ohm resistor, 3.3, and then there is this transformer on which I send a low frequency signal to start with 1.4 hertz and 1.8 volts peak to peak. There is a voltage divider, 47 ohms, 3.3 ohms. I compute this level and then on the secondary side, there is a 3 ohm resistor for the current into the oscillator that I'm using. Uh, but the secondary is connected through a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. So a very small fraction of the voltage developed on the secondary is going to add to the uh, voltage on the on the device under test, the oscillator. Well, this is the device under test and this is the analyzer. Uh, this voltage uh, is going into two mixers, one here and one here, and they are fed with the good 10 MHz signal from the Wenzel oscillator, split by a an hybrid, and then the, the a mixer works like an amplitude modulator and I have a resistor here to make the signal that goes through balanced by the signal through the resistor because this forms an interferometer uh, just a very small fraction of the carrier is going through but the modulation that comes from the 16 volts uh, will be present on the signal and then an amplifier and the same here and these two signals go into my two channel receiver where I can see the sideband noise uh, which will be a measure on the uh, DC variations here the low frequency noise and I have a calibration problem that's why I have this signal generator here. So I have a known noise level that comes from here. 
uh, and I will be able to see the spur at 1.4 Hertz offset on the spectra, the phase noise spectra that I can record with a two channel receiver. So I get the 1.4 Hertz from this generator and one cable goes to that box and the other cable goes to the oscilloscope. And here in DC mode on the oscilloscope I can see I have 1.8 volts peak to peak. And here I am looking at that particular signal with the oscilloscope and on the other channel of the oscilloscope uh, where I have AC mode and of course it doesn't give 1.8 volts anymore because uh, there is a high pass filter at maybe 1 hertz or so so I have to measure this voltage and it comes as 1.6 volts so the gain uh, in AC mode is 1.6 over 1.8 on the secondary winding of the transformer I find 71 millivolts peak to peak. When I switch to 14 Hz I get the same amplitude when looking directly on the output. But when I look at the secondary of the transformer I have a higher level which is 113 millivolts peak to peak. So this calibration signal that I'm sending this way uh, is frequency dependent. Above about 20 Hertz I get the theoretical 42 microvolts RMS. I found 40 uh, millivolts here at 14 Hertz but only 29 at 1.4 Hertz. So I see how the voltage drops, uh, but I still have a significant signal down at 1.4 Hz. I will now check the sideband noise from the two channel receiver. But before that I have to adjust the uh, resistors to make the carrier rather weak in order to not saturate this receiver with the carrier. I have adjusted the interferometers here and here uh, with uh, the resistor values and the reactance. And here I can tune away part of the inductance. And here 22 microhenry happened to fit well and I had a much smaller resistor here. And then I get zero at 14.8 volts. But I run the unit here at 16 volts. So I have a significant carrier in both channels. Which is amplified and sent to the two channel receiver. I'm feeding the box from uh, this power supply. The standard supply which is rather noisy. I have set it to 17.15 volts. Because I wanted 16 volts to the oscillator, so I wasn't quite accurate when presenting the idea. Anyway, what I find on the screen here, you might remember I thought I had a correlation like this. But I have discovered there is something wrong with this way of computing the correlation between the modulations. Because... Uh, here I see two peaks of equal strength. They have a common source. Uh, they come out with a fairly high correlation. Uh, but I have also the peaks at 14 Hz. I have set 14 Hz now rather than 1.4. So I can change the x-axis. I am feeding the oscillator now from the box where I have the mixers and the transformer and I am using the standard power supply which is rather noisy 
and I have set it to 17 volts because I want 16 point a little 0.03 now uh, which is the supply voltage uh, on the oscillator now and I'm looking at the sideband noise, the phase noise of this oscillator when having uh, 1.8 volts of 14 hertz into the unit. And here is the lean rod screen. The strong signal is 14 hertz and at this line which is 116 minus 116.3 and the noise floor here is 140 and a half in the baseband spectrum I have the 14 Hertz signal here and here and I can see this one is a little weaker than that one that's because there is a small component of amplitude modulation also. 140 and a half at 14 Hertz. That's here. That's very close to what I had when measuring this noise before. So I have not added noise with the box. Uh, well, I have added so much with the power supply from here to here. So uh, I don't know if I really am noise free with the box when using a good power supply. We will see later. Now I am looking at the two outputs here from the interferometers in this box. And what I see then is the amplitude noise uh, in the linear screen. The 14 Hertz signal here comes at minus 91.1 on the dbc scale and the noise floor is about here that's 115 and a half and i can probably see better if i contract the frequency scale i want to look at the white trace and it's here at 14 Hertz 115.5 or maybe a little bit up or down I haven't waited long enough really anyway what I'm interested in is how high the 14 Hertz signal is above the noise floor at 14 Hertz and the phase noise, that signal to noise ratio is 24.2 decibels. And for the voltage of the power supply as measured on the interferometers, that's 24.4. And uh, it's questionable whether the difference is significant. But of course, there is some small contribution of noise from the oscillator itself here that could be one or two tenths of a dB. I have inserted an RC filter so I had to increase the voltage by about 6 volts and since the current is 0.3 amps it means it is about 20 ohms and the capacitor is 450,000 microfarads. So it's a time constant in the order of 10 seconds. What happens then is that the noise floor goes down very much. Uh, the noise floor here is about minus 150, while the 14 Hz signal is here at about 91, as before. I have changed the scale so I can see that uh, the peak is at 91.4 while the noise floor at 14 Hertz here is at about minus 153 
and the test statistics isn't really good enough yet, but this is uh, well below what could be a problem, so I don't need to measure it more accurately. Directly on the power supply I could see a noise which was 24.4 dB between, below the 14 Hz carrier. And now with the filter the noise is 61.6 dB uh, below the 14 Hz carrier. So this is an improvement of 37.2. Well, 37, don't care about the decimal. 37 dB lower is the noise floor now. With the current parameters I can see the noise down to about 1 Hz here, where it is about 13 decibels stronger than it is at 14 Hz. The noise contribution I should expect from the filtered power supply, that is when measuring the red dots here, is these points that I have found now, which means the RC filter is perfectly adequate, at least down to 1 Hz, and it doesn't look likely to go up like that at 0.2 Hz, not with a time constant of 10 seconds, which is 0.1 Hz is here. I have set parameters to see the noise f at very low frequencies. It's 0.1 Hz here. This might be questionable, minus 110, because there is a negative signal very close to it. But here is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 Hz. And then the signal is very noisy. And here is the injected signal at 1.4 Hz. And I can evaluate the peak by changing scales. The level of the 1.4 Hz signal is minus 81.3. It's quite clear that phase modulation due to noise on the power supply does not contribute at all to the measurement the red dots here, because uh, what I observe on the voltage uh, when using the big capacitors are these points, and they are far below where they could have any influence. Another thing is of course that at let's say 0.01 hertz here somewhere outside uh, there could be stability problems in the power supply that give uh, that are not attenuated by the RC filter, and that could cause stability problems uh, in the oscillator. I have removed the low pass filter, so here is again the noise uh, from this power supply. Here is the AM noise in white which is the noise from the power supply I'm testing. The yellow trace is phase modulation and that is very low because I don't do any phase modulation with the Schottke mixers. But this is an artifact that the phase noise goes up at the frequency zero or very close to it and the reason is the filtering in the audio amplifier as well as in the sound card. So all the way there is only AM noise and up to about 20 Hertz the amount of artificial phase noise is so small that it doesn't change the reading on the white trace. But here of course they are both equal so the error should be 3 decibels. So 3 decibels up, that's where the white trace should be. And that's one and a half scale, so it's here. Here is the power supply noise 
as a scene with Linrad in correlation mode 1, uh, I have selected the signal here, which is the 14 Hz modulation, AM modulation. It has here and here, the two sidebands. I'm measuring the level in a fairly narrow bandwidth, and this is what I see. And I have selected, uh, I can measure here, and as you see, the signal level is plus or minus 0.5 dB. Then I just switch off the modulation here, and then I have to wait some time before the signal disappears, because I have set very large transforms to get the resolution. Now the signal has disappeared, and I can see that the S meter trace has dropped by about 22 decibels. I will wait for a while to evaluate what is the dBc per hertz that I have observed here. Here is the noise floor. It comes at minus 17.2 dB per hertz. 17.2 decibels, that is 53 times in power, or 7.3 times in voltage. Now the modulation uh, comes from a signal that is 40 millivolts RMS on the power supply line. So divide that by uh, 7.3 means 5.5 millivolt per square root hertz. That's pretty high considering the specification saying 2 millivolts. So I can conclude that the very low frequencies are excluded when they specify the noise. I am now looking at an offset of 1 kilohertz. I have set the BFO so it shows the uh, frequency correctly here, the offset from the signal that I'm interested in, the 14 hertz carrier from the modulation that I supply from the signal generator. What I can read here at 1 kilohertz, in the corner I see there is 7.4 decibels of correlation advantage and the level is minus 49.7. Here is the noise of the power supply itself as I have found now. Uh, it is the EX355, the noisier of the two. And I have placed the scale in such a way that the contribution the power supply makes to my oscillator coincides with the uh, curve I have measured at, for the oscillator. Uh, this is the measurement of the oscillator, uh, the green rectangle, well, squares. And they come here at 14 hertz. So I have placed the vertical scale for the power supply noise to come at the same place. Because when the oscillator is run from the RC filter, the oscillator noise is far below down here. So it doesn't contribute to this green squares. I have also placed a scale in microvolts per square root hertz here. So this is about 5 microvolts per square root hertz in the 10 to 50 hertz range. And then there is a 1 over f slope down to 0.1 hertz, probably well below that. And it is a little bit alarming because the oscillator noise steeps much steeper and the contribution from the uh, oscillator I mean, this noise here gives a degradation of 10 decibels, a little bit more than that. It means that 
if I extrapolate here, uh, this curve will steep much st steeper uh, than this. So at some point, maybe uh, 100 seconds or something like that, the instabilities of the power supply, if the 1 over F noise continues down to so low frequencies, that will cause an, uh, the most important contribution to the stability in the 100 second time scale. Maybe. I don't know for sure, but that is a guess that I'm making. I want to verify my finding, so I have set this generator to the maximum amplitude that it can produce. That happens to be 10.3 volts. I'm looking at the DC supply to the oscillator, which is the output of this box here. And I'm running it through an RC filter, uh, 10 kilo ohms, 0.33 microfarads. That will filter way higher frequencies, but let 50 Hz and lower through. And then I look here. The one trace is channel 4, which is the trigger input. And the other trace is the channel 1, which has a signal that is magnified by 10 times in amplitude. comes from the output of channel 2. And it's hard to see the signal because of all the 50 Hz, but it is in the order of 3 millivolts, which means 300 microvolts uh, at the point going into the box. It's much easier to see in XY mode. Uh, so I have the sine wave from the oscillator on X and then I have the other signal, the one of interest on Y, and I still get approximately 3 millivolts. 10.3 volts peak to peak here uh, gives me 300 microvolts peak to peak here. I was measuring at the output here. Uh, that means that 1.8 volts should give me 52 volts peak to peak and that's 18 microvolts RMS but I had expected 42 volts microvolts sorry and that is more than a factor of two so something is wrong here by about six decibels. It seems the red scale is more accurate than the black one. I don't know where the mistake may be done and I don't want to spend time on finding out because it's not really important for what I'm wanting to do. It just gives me an idea about the order of magnitude. And in that sense, both are the same. The important thing is the shape of the curves and the relative position vertically. Uh, from the power supply, this is the noise. And the contribution it gives to the noise from the oscillator is the distance between the red circles and these green rectangles. So it is about 25 decibels, more 27 decibels, uh, at the worst position, which is about 100 hertz. Uh, Another problem could be at very low frequencies because even a very small noise level on the power supply gives a lot of phase noise from the oscillator. Uh, this much for this level. So at even lower frequencies I can guess that the degradation due to instabilities of the power supply is going to be even more important for the frequency stability of the oscillator. I have modified the 4-channel audio amplifier which is between the Schottky mixers and the sound card. It is now DC coupled so it will not provide any phase shift anymore. 
Here is the coherent mode 2 screen. Uh, when I look at the correlation between the phase modulation and the amplitude modulation. If you remember, there was a big uh, signal uh, looking like if it were phase modulation. Now it is much narrower. It's only the filtering of the sound card that is left. And the amplitude noise which measures the noise from the power supply is valid up to this point and again from this point. So I'm using only about 5 Hertz around the DC, which is the center here. And of course uh, this peak is much broader because it's very far down. It's more than 20 decibels here. But it doesn't affect measurement accuracy of the strongest component, whether it's amplitude noise as here or whether it is phase noise, which is normally uh, from oscillators. Here is the phase noise when I'm running the oscillator from the power supply that provided the noise I just showed. And now the situation is much better around 40 Hertz. So I can just skip this short section from here to here. And of course I have problems also here. Uh, but I think now the situation is more clear. The red circles are the same as in the previous plot. The oscillator with a carefully filtered supply voltage through the 10 second RC filter. The yellow triangles is the amplitude noise as measured with the Schottky diode voltage measure system I have now. And with the uh, modified audio amplifier I can also see this range here. The green uh, squares here is the phase noise. And it's uh, surprising why is it higher here than the oscillator itself. Uh, I will measure it uh, again to see if something has changed. Here is the phase noise again with the RC filter and I can immediately see that the noise is much higher minus 94 at 0.2 Hertz. So I will take down the numbers and plot it on the diagram. What I observe is the blue points here and I had expected to see the red ones or maybe something here. Uh, if the explanation for this high noise is not due to the power supply noise but to the oscillator itself. It should be present also in this measurement with the blue points which it isn't except up here where it coincides roughly with this line. So uh, I don't know what to say about this Maybe I can find out something. I will continue experimenting. This is 45 hours. Statistics is good up to about 15 Hertz. Uh, at 20 Hertz, that's this point. It's a little bit less good, but I can make it, let's say, minus 163. That's probably within 1 dB. When I compress the x-axis much more, I can read also at 200 Hertz here, minus 174. And at 500 Hertz, 178. Maybe 178 and a half. But it's rather uncertain. The red dots that indicate the imaginary part are very close to the yellow, which is the uh, phase noise. Now phase noise has degraded much more. 
about 10 dB higher noise at 0.2 Hz. Minus 85, minus 84. And the curve has a bend here. And uh, I don't know what this is caused by. The only change uh, since last, uh, since the previous measurement, is that I tried uh, to adjust these uh, capacitors by turning back and forth several times like this. And the same with this one. Because I thought the degradation was because of some contact resistance in those capacitors. Now I do the same again and I will see whether that changes the situation. The now much degraded performance at 0.2 Hz is this mark. And then this line steeps very much as compared to before. And at one and a half hertz offset, it coincides nearly within one decibel with the best results. And then it falls here with no difference from what I have observed before. So this is a special new phenomenon that affects long time stability, probably at least times uh, of 5 seconds, 0.2 Hz, it's much more unstable. And I don't know yet what the cause is, but I suspect trimmer capacitors. This is clearly not as bad. I had 85 before, now it is 90. That is at uh, 0.2 Hz. 0.3 Hz, I had 96. That's here, and it's significantly better. And the only thing I did was uh, adjusting very little up and down on the trimmer capacitors. So the explanation I think I have is that there is a variable resistor, a contact resistance in one of the trimmers, and that makes the phase shift in the resonator that the trimmer adjusts vary a little and varying phase shift means varying frequency. So I have to replace trimmer capacitors. Phase noise is a measure of frequency stability in the short time scale up to 5 seconds as I have been measuring up to now. Here is frequency stability in a time scale of 7 hours. Uh, I have set uh, a high resolution in the baseband. From here to here is 0.1 Hz. But I have magnified because now I have selected this line and that is the 49th overtone of the audio frequency here, which was at, I think, 40 hertz. I don't remember. I don't want to calculate either, but I have counted. This is number 49, which means that the actual frequency shift here, which is the largest excursion of the frequency, it's about 0.3 hertz. Divide by 50 means 0.006 hertz. 6 millihertz and this is at 10 megahertz so it is 6 times 10 to the power of 10 or uh, 0.6 parts per billion so it is unstable but not so dramatic as it looks on the screen anyway here you can see the oscillatory behavior uh, this is channel 1 the one which is face locked to the other and from here it is channel 2 the free running reference oscillator and the signal that is mixed with one or the other is the signal from my two crystal oscillator now i will show in slow motion 
how the two channels change with the time and you see the red trace which is channel 1 and the green trace is channel 2 now because I have set the fixed polarization to vertical I have disconnected face locking. Uh, channel 2 is this trace, it continues from before. Channel 1 has a slightly different frequency now. The movement that is the same in both curves comes from my two crystal oscillator, and we can see it dominates greatly these things, this frequency instability with a time constant of about half an hour. They come from this oscillator. It's also clear that uh, channel 2 is a little better than channel 1 when it comes to this noise here, small scale noise. And that has been visible in the normal measurements also, but uh, at a much closer spacing to the carrier. Here it's a matter of a millimeter or so in this scale, and well, it's several minutes anyway. And of course here, and this stuff is due to the oscillator in channel 1, because it's not present here. So I have a big problem with my new oscillator that seemed so good not so long ago but which is not good anymore. I have replaced this capacitor by one of these but as you have seen there is still a big stability problem. This is the phase noise spectrum and here are the values that I observed previously. The ideal straight line would be minus 105, but I observed minus 103 at 0.2 hertz. 103 at 0.2 hertz, that's down here. So it differs by 2, 4, 6 decibels. And the meaning of this dip, I don't know, it could be an artifact or it could be just noise. It is about 90 decibels uh, below the carrier, whatever the problem. There could be a negative signal uh, and at 90 dB. When I look at the baseband filter 90 dB down, it is down here, and then I see there is something belonging to the carrier uh, which is filtered out and that could cause a problem. I will open this filter and see whether this artifact changes. Now I will extract the carrier to use for phase detection from a twice as wide filter here. Then I have to wait several hours to see whether that makes a difference. Collecting correlation averages is a slow process when the transform size is large and the sampling rate low. 
This is 45 and a half hour, and it is 4,600 correlation averages. Uh, I still have this odd structure here. The previous measurement, uh, I will hold this pencil here, looked like this. It has shifted a little bit, but it still looks very much the same. Uh, interesting is the measurement at 0.2 Hz, it's here, and now it's at the same place. And here, 0.4 Hz, and it differs by about 0.2 dB, and that's because this measurement has not been running for quite as a long time as the new one here. You can see the curve is smoother. So this phenomenon is likely uh, not caused by the software. It is something in my hardware, probably. To see better, I have expanded the frequency scale. So 0.1 Hz is here. And I can see that uh, the difference between the imaginary part, the red dots that go here, and the real part, which is the yellow trace, is very small. It means that there is correlated noise between the channels, but it is not in phase. It is uh, something like 45 degrees, because the imaginary part is equal to the real part here. And here the difference is also small. And it should be something like here for 4,600 uh, averages. So uh, this is correlated no, uh, modulation. It could be due to the PLL, the frequency response of the phase lock, it could also be due to uh, pulling between the oscillators because there is some signal leaking from one oscillator into the other. Uh, and I don't know which one, but it doesn't affect the result at 200.2 Hz and above. But now that I know that there is a big problem at even lower frequencies than 0.1 Hz from the carrier, it would be nice to get rid of this phenomenon. I am again looking at the 49th overtone of the audio. The audio is 41 Hertz, so it is a 2 kilohertz offset that I am looking at. And I see a very clear periodic function. Uh, the period time is like that, as you can see. And if I look at this time scale here, 1835 to 1936, it's a little more than one hour. Pretty odd. So maybe my two crystal oscillator is unstable, oscillating with the one hour. That's a very long time. Or it is the 10 megahertz oscillators that both oscillate with one hour. Maybe it has to do with the temperature in the room here. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, this uh, curve uh, is without phase locking. I have disconnected the PLL cable and I have tuned the oscillators to be very close in frequency. I was tuning here and then something interesting happens. Here they are locked to each other, here locking is lost, and, and it comes and goes, but here they are locked, and here locking is lost. So there is a lock range, uh, I don't know exactly, because both may be affected by this uh, phenomenon, but probably not. So one is or the other is affected by something. Uh, I will check the 
Wenzel oscillator on one channel and uh, the 10 megahertz on another channel to see whether the problem is in the two crystal oscillator or in the reference oscillators. Here is my experimental oscillator in channel 1 and the Wenzel oscillator in channel 2. And you can see they are not correlated, so this one hour instability is in my oscillator. But short time instabilities seem to be greater for the Wenzel. You can see it's wider here and it looks wider all the time. But this is low, unstable, but with a slower. So something is bad. I don't know what it is, but it is very clearly seen in the very steep slope below 1 hertz. It degrades rapidly towards this one hour instability. And it hasn't been there all the time. Something has gone wrong. I will try to find out, but first I will try to fix the uh, crosstalk between the two oscillators so they will not lock to each other by injection locking. Here is the result after I have improved the buffer amplifiers a little. Uh, there is a significant change, particularly here. And it's almost 6 decibels. When I look at 0.2 Hz, that's here, the difference is small. It's within the expected accuracy due to the not so large number of averages. And if I take 0.3, 0 0.4 Hz, that's here, it's the same. It's a small difference, a couple of tenths of a dB. But at 0.1 Hz, that's about here, the result doesn't seem reasonable. And here uh, it seems more reasonable, but uh, I don't want to trust it anyway. It is very clear that one of my oscillators is not very good as compared to the other one. It's a 6 decibels difference from the blue trace to the red trace. And the previous measurement here uh, had much lower statistics on the uh, uncorrelated traces, but as you can see it's about 6 decibels here also. And I increased the number of averages when repeating here to make this more easy to see. So uh, I would save a lot of time if I could improve the oscillator, which isn't so good. So I will start to investigate that before uh, trying to find what has gone wrong with the two crystal oscillator. This is the 10 MHz local oscillator I have been using for channel 1. It is the first one I made with overtone crystals and it's not particularly good. I have replaced it by this Wenzel oscillator, this one, and a 6 dB amplifier. Here is the phase noise I see now. Uh, channel 1 in blue and channel 2 in red. The blue is the Wenzel oscillator and the red is my other 10 MHz local oscillator. And you can see at 0.2 Hz the, there is no correlation advantage at all. It means that all the noise comes from uh, the one that I'm going to investigate what the problem is with. But at larger separations there is some correlation advantage and I can see that the Wenzel is not quite as good as my uh, second 10 megahertz oscillator. And again, blue is the Wenzel 
and red is my second 10 megahertz local oscillator which is now in channel 2 and yellow that is the first local oscillator which I am going to try to improve for close range noise. The unit is very sensitive to infrasound. If I remove this like that to have a bow open box the difference is dramatic. I will show after half an hour or something. Now when the box is open we can see how much wider the baseband spectrum is and the phase noise it was 90 before that's down here and now it is above it is stronger than minus 60 and here it was minus 102 now it is 70 that's 32 decibels and this has to be infrasound something is very sensitive to the air pressure inside the box maybe even to the extent that it has some influence when the lid is closed also I made several videos when I designed this first overtone crystal oscillator uh, you can see them easiest you can find them by going to my home page sm5bsz.com and here you can find lean rod and click on that and you come to lean rod home page and the first link here uh, that is the videos so I click on that and here you can see all the videos or almost all of them and the ones of interest now come here it's the fourth design it starts by nerds 67 which is only about the crystal and then various experiments until the last one uh, nerds 74 and now I will make another video about this fourth design so I will stop the experiments with the two crystal oscillator here and fix the local oscillator for my two channel system to make it easier to study a better oscillator.